Hey there, welcome back to Creepy Encounters, in today's video. A kiss goodnight. The time I was almost abducted by a serial killer. I met a obsessive stalker on Omegle. My friends Jessica, 27F, and James, 30 meters, have been together for six years, and have lived in their house for over a year now. I am over quite often, I have been friends and co-workers with Jessica for four years. They are wonderful, they have kinda of adopted me, and they keep me alive by feeding me a few times a week. So I was over for dinner after work a few weeks ago. We all got to their place within minutes of each other. We all drank and caught up, after a little while, James went outside to grill up some steaks, came in and asked why I kissed the door. I'm pretty confused and go over to the sliding glass door where he is. Sure as the world there is a kiss print on the outside of the door, lipstick and everything. Few things James and Jessica are both shorter than I am. He's about 5 feet 8 inches she's 5 feet 2 inches and I'm 5 feet 11 inches the kiss print was at a height, that if I popped up in the balls of my feet I could reach that spot with my lips. Far above where Jessica could reach and as much as I love the thought of James in bubblegum pink lipstick, he couldn't reach it either. I haven't worn makeup in many, many years. I don't even own lipstick. I think I have some mascara, and an ancient eyeshadow palette. They both thought it was me playing a prank after all, Jessica owns lipstick. I could have just been trying to freak them out. Spoilers I'm not, but I am a smoker, so I do frequent their back porch through that door. Besides, it's pretty difficult to get on their porch. We got three sides right. Well the right side is sort of a balcony with a 30 feet, or so, drop. The left side has a 10 feet drop, or so, with a fence, and inside the fence is immediately James Grill and some workout equipment. It's a pretty narrow space and wouldn't be easily navigated with all that junk there, plus it's pretty high up. The front of the porch would be the easiest way to get in, but you would have to be dedicated. They have thick, tall boxwood hedges along with a fence. So you'd get pretty scraped up. So at this point, I'm thinking that Jessica just climbed up on a chair and kissed the glass. She's pranking me? Well James cleaned off the glass, and we went on with our night. A few nights later, I'm back at their place. I was going out for a smoke when I saw a kiss on the glass, in the same place with nude shade lipstick. About a foot below the lip print, there was a smudge heart. I'm not sure if this person had really greasy hands, or if they used spit or something, but it was extra creepy. I pointed it out to my friends, and again they thought it was me. James even insisted I cleaned it off the glass. Jessica nor James have ever been ones to prank and neither have I but I still felt like the most logical explanation was Jessica trying to prank James and I, by setting me up or something. The next time it happened, a few days later when I hadn't been there for a while, Jessica called me. She was a little accusatory and rattled. I do have a key to their house, and she asked if I had used it to kiss the glass again because when they woke up she noticed that there was a lip print on the door. I told her it wasn't me and she let it go, but I could tell she still thought it was me. At this point I'm not really thinking it's her. Like it could be, but it definitely seems like it's time to give it up already. She seemed genuinely mad at me, and it didn't seem funny at all. It happened a couple of more times. Once more while I was over, then there was a break for about a week and then again when I hadn't been there. I had to go to another state for work, and while I was gone Jessica video called me. She saw me in my hotel room and just started freaking out. She said this whole time she was really holding out hope that this was me, even though it wasn't funny, at least it wouldn't be terrifying. Alas, I am 1000 miles away and there is a kiss print on her back door with a heart underneath. She apologized to me for being so adamant that it was me she just didn't want to be wrong. I told her it's okay but to call the police. She did. They came several hours later, looked around for 5 minutes and pretty much told her that's weird. Told her she can take pictures and submit them online to them, and said they probably camped through the hedges and over the fence. Thank you, you two specific boys in blue. Big help. So we are all completely freaked out. I suppose it's possible that it is her and or James and neither of them know when to call it quits, but I really don't think it is. Someone is really dedicated to giving them kisses. They ordered a camera. It came a couple of days ago and put it on the porch. So far, nothing. I'll let you know if they see anyone. In February of 2012, I went to visit my grandfather's grave for his birthday. His death was a really hard thing for me to deal with, as he had died in March of 2011, and was still very fresh to me. I was kneeling in front of his grave with my head down, mourning and crying, when my body went into full dangerous close by mode. I looked up to see a man running full sprint from the woods surrounding the cemetery, and forced myself to get to NY truck as quickly as possible, without the man getting too close to me. By the time I made it to my truck he had gotten about 50 feet from me. 
I jumped in and locked the door, much to his apparent displeasure. He threw his hands up in a huff like his favorite team had just lost a football game. I started the truck and started to drive out as fast as I could, but not before driving right past him. I didn't break eye contact for a second, and neither did he. So I got a really good look at his face. Cut to a few years later. I'm at work bored and decided to download an app that had a ton of paranormal, cryptid, serial killer, and UFO articles. As I was browsing through the serial killers, I came across one that made my heart drop into my ass. Israel Keys, most known for murdering an underaged girl in Alaska, dismembering her body, and dropping the pieces into a frozen lake. He would bury kill kits in places long before he ever committed the crimes. After the incident in Alaska, he had traveled into Texas, for a wedding in a city not too far from where I live and had disappeared for a bit and no one in his family knew where he was. He was arrested in that city, and brought to the prison one city over from me, before he was extradited back to Alaska to stand trial. About a year ago I found a book about him that provided a lot of the details I have given here. He had been killing for years, and no one knows what the actual death toll is. He eventually killed himself in prison. At the end of the book about him, he described some of his favorite places to abduct people. Public parks, and cemeteries. I often wonder if there's a kit buried in those woods. You were fast Israel, but I was faster and I'm glad we didn't officially meet. Edit, the app I was on doesn't seem to exist anymore. It was called Paranormal News, but the one in the Google Play Store isn't the same one. For clarification I wasn't super far away from my truck, maybe 30 feet, so I didn't have to go far, but I damn near levitated there. A few minutes ago I was just surfing in Omegle. I added chatting as the keyword for the common interest thing. A guy appeared, he was skinny in a healthy way, blonde hair up to his neck, he had a sharp jawline. I started by asking how his day was. He said it's nice and asked for a favor. He talked very fast. He said that his online Skype friend isn't picking up his calls, he's been calling her for the past 6 days. So he asked me to call her then he started to say her name or ID, Ike, I've never used Skype, and spelt it. The name started with Sunny, I didn't give attention to the name thing fully because all the while I was asking him to stop. He said she's a popular girl and they were good friends. I said to him that maybe she's avoiding him and let her go. Then he started to act very strangely. He started to cry a bit like tears didn't come but his face turned a bit sorrowful. He said that someone might have stolen her Skype account and asked me to call and confirm that case where meanwhile he'll stay on Omegle. I again said she's avoiding things. He added a pint of rage to his sorrowful face and yelled, no, she can't avoid me, she will not. I donated $1,000, she dare not, I'm going to call again and again and I'm sure it's an identity theft. He said these words in a threatening way and squeezed his mic a little bit. At this point, I got terrified and placed my fingers near the escape button and I was ready to disconnect. Before doing it I said to him that he's crazy and a psychopath. Then he made a creepy grin and said, that's called bait and he disconnected the call. This ain't an RBI to ask things but why did he said the last thing? Omegle can't be hacked, only location can be pulled out. But that's also useless in this case. I don't know why he said bait. I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more real life creepy encounters around the world. See you in the next video. Bye.